The supersized grand reopening of the Jets' mailbag features a smorgasbord of quarterback queries. Continue to tweet questions about all things Jets to at Maidenighton. Check out our expanded football coverage on Facebook with more analysis, opinions and fan engagement with chats this off-season. Like our page at nydn.usmanishmata. What would it take to reunite Michigan State teammates Kirk Cousins and Levy and Bell? It would completely change the offense. At Mwit 8 AP Photo Bill Kester and Darren Cummings. Can you imagine the Jets pulling this off? It would instantly infuse Todd Bowles' team with proven commodities. But let me do the honors of being a Debbie Downer. It's not happening. It makes perfect sense in a vacuum given the team's glaring needs at quarterback and our offensive weapon, to borrow a Jacksonville Jaguars term, but the combined price tags will be too steep. Mike Mockignan would have to dole out more than $60 million in full guarantees at signing for Cousins. Bell turned down the Steelers' five-year offer last summer that included $30 million in the first two years and $42 million in the first three years. It doesn't make much financial sense for the Jets to pour that much loot into a running back even though the soon to be 26-year-old Bell is a dynamic weapon. Cousins and Bell played two seasons together in college. It would be a cool story for them to reunite in the NFL, but it's not practical given the realities of their financial goals. Neither one is going to offer to play on a discount, that's for damn sure. If money weren't a factor, I'd sign up for a Cousins-Bell combo platter right now. Although the Jets will have about $100 million of salary cap space, don't get caught up in that number. The only thing that matters is that the Jets have ample cap space. The most important factor is this how much cash are Woody and Christopher Johnson willing to spend this offseason breaking the bank for Cousins and Bell is highly unlikely. The Jets will have interest in Cousins assuming Washington doesn't slap a $34.5 million franchise tag on him, but there are rumblings on one Jets drive that they want to break the bank if the bidding for his services escalates. If the Jets were to make a move for Alex Smith, what would we give up both of our second-round picks? At Mike Vornick, Bill Kastrunap, the Alex Smith watch will be fascinating this offseason. On one hand, he would be a perfect fit for the Jets, who could use Smith for the next 23 years. On the other hand, there is no way the Jets should trade both of their second-round picks for a soon-to-be 34-year-old quarterback with only one year left on his contract. Smith is coming off career highs in passing yards, quarterback rating, touchdowns and completion rate. He was in the NFL MVP conversation for the first six weeks of the season. The Chiefs are looking to hand over the signal caller keys to Patrick Mahomes, so they'll try to squeeze every bit of compensation out of quarterback needy squads. In case you've lived in a cave for the past half century, the Jets fit that description. Before the 2017 season, I wouldn't have ponied up anything more than a third-rounder for Smith, but it will probably take more to get him after his career year. Should the Jets give up one of their second-round picks for Smith, who only has 33 regular season interceptions in five seasons in Kansas City 61 games ID probably make that deal, but the feeling is that it will take more. Remember the Chiefs traded two second-round picks to the 49ers five years ago for a younger Smith. I'm sure they'd like a similar return. Smith would be a quality Blue Gant play starter in 2018, but what happens after that he's scheduled to make $17 million with base salary and bonuses in the final year of his deal. He'll be a free agent after 2018. What if he walks after one season you mentioned previously that Jets would like to sign or trade for a veteran QB rather than draft one? Thoughts on Bridgewater, A.J. McCarron, Sam Bradford and Case Keenum, and Louis Gishtias, the Jets prefer to bring in a plug and play starter while developing a younger one. Give me Teddy Bridgewater any day of the week from your list. He's young 25 with playoff experience. Sure, there's some measure of risk given his grievous knee injury that kept him sidelined for nearly two seasons. But the upside is there. Signing Bridgewater and drafting another quarterback would make sense. Here's the giant catch I don't believe the Vikings will let him shake free. I'd expect Minnesota to sign Bridgewater to a reasonable multi-year deal before the official start of free agency. Sam Bradford Case Keenum no thanks. Josh McCown is a better option if you're thinking along those lines. What's the better QB move in on a for trade Kirk, Smith, Taylor, McCarron and use draft to address other needs or sign a Bridgewater and draft a QB in round one at Mickey Santo that's a complicated question from a latex salesman. All of these quarterback solutions obviously depend on the system being run. So, the Jets need to determine that first. Will John Morton be back as the play caller? If not, what system will the Jets employ once you figure that out? You can target the quarterbacks that make sense for that scheme.
Generally speaking, I think the Jets need a plug and play signal caller that can help them bide time for two or three years, if need be, while developing a younger player at the position. If the Jets had one of the top two picks in the upcoming draft, ITD be much easier to go in with Sam Darnold or Josh Rosen. The Jets would likely have to trade up from number six to land Wyoming quarterback Josh Allen, who ISNT going to light the NFL on fire as soon as he steps onto the field anyway. Allen has intriguing skills, but he will need time to develop. Here's the rub Mike Mockagnan and Todd Bowles don't have lifelong contracts. Can either of them really afford a third consecutive 511 season? Probably not. The playoffs in 2018 might not be a mandate, but you can bet that Christopher and Woody Johnson would like to see more wins than the past two seasons. I'm not sure Allen will get you there as a rookie. Ryan Kangap, however, if the Jets' brain trust falls in love with Ellen or anyone else within striking distance, I've always believed that they should go for it. But there can be no gray area. The powers that be must be completely sold on the young quarterback. And I'm not so sure that any single signal caller within striking distance falls into that category. TWOMINUTE Drill 10 Quick Hitters Do you see any scenario where San Francisco signs Cousins and deals Jimmy Garoppolo to the Jets in a trade? I've been saying since he was traded that he would love the opportunity to get retribution against the Patriots twice a year, at Nighthawk underscore 45 Jimmy G and Kyle. Shanahan will be making sweet music in the Bay Area for the next decade. Oh, and Garoppolo couldn't care less about sticking it to the Patriots. He learned a lot inside the gates of the evil empire. If you were the Jets, would you trade up for a quarterback or trade down for more picks and draft quarterback in second round? At Big Jets XE it depends on what happens in free agency and before the draft. If the Jets sign or trade for a veteran like Cousins, Smith Taylor or Bridgewater, I'd take the best player available at number 6 and draft a quarterback later. Jets aren't really going draft Lamar Jackson at number 6, right? At Prof could each you have a better chance of being drafted at number 6 than Jackson? He's not a consideration that early. So, exhale. Do you think Chad Pennington will ever coach? What's your take on his coaching future if he wanted to? At Judah Chop 80 by all accounts, Pennington is a bright guy. He was a finalist for the Rhodes Scholarship once upon a time, after all. But it's a grind being a NFL coach. Just ask Rich Gannon, who had an epiphany this week that resulted him backing out of John Gruden's offer to join his staff. I don't know how Pennington is wired. Maybe he'd love that life. Either way, he strikes me as someone who would succeed in just about anything he pursues. Why is it that a freshman Alabama quarterback who has never played is better than the Jets' backup quarterbacks at Cherzika to a tag of Iloa had a night to remember, and perhaps has a bright future, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The use in any way Christian Hackenberg is the starting quarterback for the Jets next year, at Leone 88M it's not going to happen. There is a real possibility that Hackenberg won't be on the team in 2018. The best course of action for the team and the player is to part ways at the start of the new league year in March so that he can find a place that will give him a better opportunity to play at some point. He will not have that chance with the Jets, so it makes little sense to keep him on the roster to collect dust for a third season. How much will Bowles' inability to significantly develop Petty or Hack affect Mac's decision on a QB path if he feels Bowles can't develop a young QB? Might this push him to a veteran Smith? Cousins, at Will Munger your premise is wrong. Petty and Hackenberg might have had substandard instruction in 2015, but coaching WASNT the issue this season. Quarterbacks coach Jeremy Bates is regarded as the best offensive mind in the building. He was a terrific